Here's a quick look at some cargo planes you've probably never heard of. Number 1. The Evangel 4T500 is the living definition of the proverb, form follows function. Form, as in the most awkward looking machine you could imagine. The Evangel was built for a very specific mission, and winning beauty contests was not one of them. The design was developed in the mid-1960s by missionary bush pilot Carl Mortensen, who sought after an aircraft that could carry a ton of cargo while safely operating out of South American jungles. With no such aircraft available, he built his own. The prototype looked somewhat like a crude islander, but the actual production aircraft was completely different, with low wings and retractable gear. Everything on the Evangel screams, overbuilt, from the massive tires, large tail surfaces and square tin can fuselage with wide cargo doors that would allow you to stuff a house inside, or at the very least, all the lumber required to build one. Simplicity was definitely top of the list. Everything was easily accessible using readily found materials and could be field repaired with makeshift tools. The wings had massive flaps and ridiculous amounts of dihedral on the outer panels. Inside its boxy tube, accommodations were equally as spartan. Up to eight passengers would sit paratrooper style, with small cushions lining the fuselage, facing inwards, as they competed for space with food crates, chickens or whatever else could be stuffed in. With two bulletproof 300 horsepower Lycoming EO 540s, the Evangel could climb like a homesick angel at 1,500 feet per minute easily clearing the jungle canopy and the threat of Indian arrows. All with flying characteristics as simple and honest as a Piper Cub. As much as we'd love to see the sky filled with these flying shoeboxes, only seven were built. Most rotted away in South America, and to my knowledge one remains airworthy in Canada. Number 2. Here's a flying shoebox called the Gaffhawk. This sad-looking contraption has an equally sad story behind it. A story of big hopes and dreams, quashed by the FAA. The General Aviation Freight Hawk was developed in the late 1970s by Hawk Industries, an offshore oil drilling equipment manufacturer, as a means to move large equipment to remote locations. At the time, there simply was nothing that suited their logistical needs, so the company, with no aviation background, set out to design their own aircraft. It had to be boxy, feature a rear-loading cargo door, and high-lift surfaces. Prior to building their first prototype, they bought a tri-pacer and rebuilt it into a tiny version of what would become the Gaff Hawk. It was named the Mini Hawk. Following successful test flights, the full-sized Gaffhawk took to the air in 1982 powered by a Pratt & Whitnet PT-6. It sported full-length ailerons, dubbed rollerons, to help turn the boxy aircraft. But things did not go well from that point on. Hawk Industries attempted to certify their plane over the period of 10 years. Purportedly, the FAA required it to be tested under conditions it was not designed for denied certification, they took the design to Poland in an attempt to partner up with PZL. As part of the agreement, the Gaff Hawk would then be fitted with brand new 1000 horsepower PZL radials. And hence, resulting in what must be the only aircraft, upgraded, from a turboprop to a piston radial in history. <laughs> that deal also fell apart, and the sole prototype was sold to a remote cargo operator in Alaska. Once again, the FAA deemed the aircraft unairworthy, and it never flew again. It sits behind some hangar, somewhere in Alaska, awaiting a savior. Number 3. Shaped like a box with wings, the Lockspizer LDA-01 is definitely an out-of-the-box design. Developed in the early 1970s by British engineer and test pilot David Lockspizer, the Land Development Aircraft 0.1 was a 7-8 scale research aircraft, to prove the concept of a very inexpensive and safe cargo hauler. It had in mind a variety of roles, passenger, freight or vehicle transport, 
agricultural, ambulance, survey or firefighting aircraft, light troop transport or battlefield support aircraft. Looking like something Bert Rutan would have designed had he worked for Schwartz Brothers, the LDA-01 sported a tandem wing configuration, with fabric covering a metal frame. Lockspizer's goal was to minimize parts count and use interchangeable components. For example, the front wing was composed of the same material as half of the main rear wing. Looking a bit underpowered with a 150 horsepower Lycoming, it's hard to fathom it initially started with only 85 horsepower. Eventually renamed as the Boxer 500, a fitting name, the LDA-01 was sadly destroyed in a hangar fire in 1987. One of the photos depicts a strange situation, befitting of the strange aircraft. Before it could take flight at the 1975 Paris Air Show, a swarm of bees settled on the cockpit and the demo flight had to be cancelled to remove the bees. It was a good thing, as one of the landing gears collapsed during taxi later that day. A flaw that thousands would have witnessed had the demo flight happened. Number 4. Can't afford a Cessna Caravan? Well, Crosses has the perfect plane for you. The exquisite shaped Crosses Paris Cargo is a French homebuilt, developed in the mid-1970s. The cavernous fuselage could accommodate skydivers, large cargo, patients on two stretchers, chemical hoppers, or four passengers, in addition to pilot and co-pilot. Not at the same time, of course. All powered by the mighty Lycoming O360, with 180 horsepower. The tandem wing configuration was derived from the famous Pou de Seal homebuilt, and the wings were easily detachable, presumably for rotable transportation. Another interesting feature is the bogey landing gear, intended for heavy landings on rough surfaces. A huge barn door will allow you to load oversized contents, wine barrels, cabinets, or even coffins. Crosses claimed they could not obtain certification, as the aircraft is stall-proof. As such, you will have to build this oddity from plans only. After investing 10 to 15,000 hours build time, you should have a perfectly flyable cargo plane, with rugged looks to match. Sadly I don't believe any Paris cargo were built, beyond two factory-built prototypes. Number 5. Take 3 equal parts GAF Nomad, Shorts 360, and Casa 212. Add a dash of dash 7, mix it all together, and the resulting concoction is roughly what the Aaron's 404 turned out to be. The 404 was a 30-seat commuter aircraft built in response to the increasing demand for small medium-sized regional turboprops. But designer Peter Ahrens and Sons wished more for the 404 than wind up a one-trick pony. Ahrens had military forces in mind, as its square fuselage was a perfect fit for LD3 containers and easy loading with a rear door. A thick wing section allowed for stole ops and the beefy landing gear housed in sponsons allowed it to operate off unprepared strips. Perhaps the most distinguishable feature were the use of four Allison 2-50 turboprops, lending it a baby C-130 look. Aaron's ambitions for the 404 included replacing all the Grumman Greyhounds as the Navy's new carrier onboard delivery aircraft. Never mind that one Greyhound engine had more horsepower than all four engines on the Aaron's combined. The 404 was funded by the Puerto Rican government and as part of the deal the aircraft would be manufacturer there along with a local workforce. Four were produced, when Puerto Rico pulled the plug and 1,000 employees went jobless. No further details are available as to what went wrong, though it's suspected the government lost faith in the program as it was going through some tough hurdles with the FAA. Three of the 404s are rotting away in Puerto Rico, one of which was converted to a roadside restaurant. And the other 404 was dumped outside of Henderson Airport outside Las Vegas.